place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Way back before we blew it all Take me back to a place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Way back before we blew it all Too many things going on I can't keep track of them all From people dropping a bomb To people putting up walls I feel like life is on haul Perception stuck in a vault I know that time can heal all But how much time till we fall? It's awfully chilly outside When there's no shelter to hide When everything is a lie You'll find that out in some time But when the things on your mind Are all considered a crime Communication aside We'll all just fight till we die Is this an argument? Or just the start of it? Either way I don't want to be a part of Hello there! Today we're gonna have a look on how to properly connect LED strips to the wires. I have lots of them here with me. Color, just warm white, waterproof, special ones. And the best part, I bought a microscope with HDMI so I can easily show you exactly what I'm doing and how I'm working on it. So the first thing you're gonna need is a soldering iron. You can spend lots of money on it. Maybe it's not necessary depending on how often you use it. This one has a station as well where you can adjust the temperature. Typically the stations come with wet sponges where you can get rid of the excess um, material on your tip. On most sites I don't have access to water and I forget taking a bottle with me. So I typically like the copper sponge here as well because it can be dry. Then you need some solder wire. There's different diameters available. Most of them have flux inside. So if you heat it up on your tip, it will melt nicely. Sometimes I prefer to have extra flux. Can be in different options like here. There is a pen as well, or there is a box like this here. But what is it for? It ensures a stronger and easier bond from the tin to the copper of the LED strip. So especially for beginners, a few bucks on one of these, I'll link them down below, is definitely worth it. Depending on the type of LED strip, you need different wires. Here I have an RGBW strip, red, blue, green, and a dedicated white one. There is RGB strips as well, then you need four wires. For RGBW, you need five. Then there is an option for just a fixed color, typically white, can be 4000 Kelvin, 3000 Kelvin, warm or cold white. In this example, you see the RGB one does not have as many chips per meter as this one here. So this is the LEDs per meter. This one is a so-called COB LED strip with so many LEDs per meter, I think over 700. So you do not see the single chips also when mounted in an aluminum profile with a cover on it. Here you would still be able to see the dots, which is not so nice. But this is only a problem if you see the LED strip. So if it's mounted on the ceiling and you see directly on it, but not so much or not even at all, if this is indirect lighting. So you maybe have a plasterboard thing and then it shines on the ceiling and then it reflects from there, then it's not a big deal. I know, I know, I know, we will solder in a second, I promise. But see here, you cannot cut the strips anywhere you want. This means when you plan a project, you have an aluminum profile in the wall. Take care that you cannot cut these strips or most of these strips and then you might end up with a blind few centimeters at the end or the beginning. I found a super nice strip which can be cut anywhere, also COB with lots of lights and this can be cut exactly on size. So you see the couple lines here are continuously but they are much more expensive of course as the normal ones. RGBW is the hardest one, so we try this, of course. Here you don't have so much space and you should be super careful for the wires not touching each other. I pulled the wires apart a little. We just need a little bit, but I typically unstrip them a little longer. I will show you in a second why. I also link the tools I'm using down below. Then I slightly twist them, not too much, just so that there is no single wire standing like girl's hair in the morning. And then I will cover the wires as a preparation because it's easier afterwards. And you see here, it's not a super nice process here. Maybe this is not the best one, 
just found this one in my workshop. So let's test it as a comparison to put some flux on the other wires with the syringe here. And now let's see, it's always important to have the tip covered because this is guaranteeing the heat to be transferred and have a look, now it's super nice. The process goes well here. Oh, that's super here. You see the wires are way too long. If we solder them like this, it could be bent and then touching each other. And on this one, I put very much on it to show you that this is also critical because then you see there is not much space, especially for RGBW here left. So this is what I came up with. I think it's better now. If this line is coming from the ceiling and you have lots of meters of lead strip, then of course it's super important at this point to cover it up. This shrinks under heat, but then you see it's nicely covered and there cannot be a connection. Also, when you stick them to the aluminum profiles, take care that there is no contact of the cables to the aluminum profile because this can also cause a short circuit. Let's try the pen on this one here. I cover them up with flux a little and then I just go over them and you see with the flux it's super easy. Just take care like here that there is no contact between them. It's super nice. I would like to have this microscope on every building site. <laughs> Now I might have too much on my tip, so I get this off. And now I go over it again, so there is no connection in between them. Let's start with this first. I have something on my tip for better heat transfer. It's not going well enough for me, so I put some more flux on it. It's my first time soldering under the microscope. It's not so easy. Because <laughs> I have to look through the microscope. Uh, this one went nicely. And we take the blue one afterwards. Okay, great. Now I have to take the other hand. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. I don't like how the black one here turned out. So I try to get it off one more time, like this. Put some flux on it, covering the tip up with some fresh, fresh one. I have to take the wrong hand for this video. <laughs> ah, but it melts nicely now. You should definitely check pulling on the wires gently, not extremely but just to see if one of them has a bad connection. But here you see it's okay. I have a power supply 24 volt here so we can test them. So the plus goes on the black one here. And depending on where I put the minus here, white, blue, we will see the different colors. I just have to make sure that this one is not touching any other ones. Let's check it out. I power the white, nicely working. Let's go for the green. Also, red, blue. Maybe here you see it better. White, blue, red, and green. Let's do another one. I've unstripped them way too much. So I just cover the beginning here. And with the flux, you see it's nicely covered. Second one as well. I cut them down in length. Now we go with this one, so also here I will put some flux on it, just because the life is so much easier with it. Then let's cover the pads. Maybe a little more, like this. And it worked pretty good. Getting the tip covered again like this because only if the tip is covered you can transfer the heat properly. Because we have already stuff on both sides on the strip and on the wire so this is just needed to heat it up and melt it together properly like this. And if I power this up 
you can barely see any individual LED chip here. So these are super nice strips. So here also from this camera perspective, I think it's a continuous line. One thing that's a bit critical to me as well are these waterproof LED lights I show you. So here you see that's an RGBW as well. So these are typically super wide, especially when you mount them or glue them in aluminum profiles, take care that the width is matching the strip. And as you see, they are fully covered and sealed in plastic, so they are waterproof. And this one I already cut for a sauna project. So how to connect it here? We have to be super gentle and precise here. So. I try to cut this off here. Now you might see that there is still some stuff on the, on the copper. Again, be super gentle here. I try to not use the sharp end, but this side here and try to get rid of all the plastics here. You see there is still stuff coming off. Maybe with the fingertip it's safer. It's the same process as always. I use my flux, so I cover the tip and then... This is the problem I face a lot with them. If you don't get rid of the plastic, then it's a bit hard to make a good bond here. Here you see the first and the third one went pretty well, but this one here, aha, uh -huh, now maybe I melted the, the plastic particles. Now, you see with the flux, it works like magic. As I said, I will put some links in the video description. If you enjoy videos like this, I would be really happy if you consider subscribing to the channel, because I will now clean up all this mess and work on the next video, especially for you. See you then.